Hello and welcome to Section 8.1, a short review of points, lines, planes, and angles. A little bit of history of geometry. Point, line, and plane are kind of those three terms that we don't really have a formal definition for. A point defines a position in three-dimensional space. A line, of course, is um, the shortest distance between two points, flat. And a plane would be two-dimensional, like a tabletop, a desktop is a great example of a plane. Um, a line is a set of points. Any two distinct points, of course, can determine a line. Any point on the line can divide the line into parts, what we call half lines. And if you have a half line with an endpoint, we call it a ray. If you only have a piece of the line, we call it a line segment. So let's take a look at the picture here. A line, AB, is going to have arrows at both ends. Like you'll notice this has arrows at both ends of it, going on indefinitely. The symbol is correspondingly so, arrows at both ends. A ray will have one end point going through the other point and continuing on. Same with the symbol. Um, of course, you name it appropriately. It starts at the end point and goes through the other point. And if you only have a piece of a line, you'll have end points at both, and it's just coded as AB with a line above it. A plane is two dimensions, extends indefinitely in both directions. Any three points that are not in the same line, what we call non-collinear, form a plane. So A, B, and C here. Like I said, this is your tabletop, a roof, um, cover of a book, anything like that. If you have two lines in the same plane and they do not intersect, they're called parallel lines. A, B, and C, D are parallel lines. They are always the same distance apart. They do not intersect. If you have a line in the plane, you're dividing the plane into what we call half planes. Kind of like if you laid a yardstick across your desk, you'd be dividing your desk into half planes. If you have a point and a line, and the point is not on the line, that is actually enough information for you to form a plane. Remember, a line is basically, can be defined as having two points. So if you have those two points plus another point, you have enough to form a plane. If you intersect two planes, you're gonna see that it forms a line. If you have two planes that don't intersect, they're parallel, like the edges of an Amazon.com box. Angles. If you have two rays that share a common endpoint, we call that endpoint the vertex, the initial side, the terminal side of the angle. This angle would be read ABC or CBA. Typically, we start with the initial side, but either one would be fine as long as the vertex is properly named. So those are the sides of the angle. We could also just call this angle B because it's clear that this is the only thing for angle B. If you had another line here, it wouldn't be sure which one you were talking about. If you measure from the initial terminal side, you're getting what we call the measure of the angle. And you've probably seen one of these before. It's called a protractor. And you measure up toward the terminal side. So you start here, you line up very carefully with there's usually a little hole in your protractor and you measure up and this angle is a 50 degree angle. We're typically going to use degrees, but you may remember years ago talking about radians or even gradients. If you have an angle less than 90 degrees, we call it acute. If we have an angle exactly 90 degrees, we call it a right angle. That's kind of like where a wall meets a floor. If you have something greater than 90, we call it obtuse. And if you actually had a straight angle, which basically would look like a line, you would call it 180 degrees. If we went back to the protractor for just a minute, a straight angle would look like going all the way around this and ending up over here. So this terminal side would basically be laying flat. So a straight angle is basically a flat line and it's 180 degrees. So again, just quick review, right, acute, obtuse, and straight. Be sure to pay attention to these so that you know how to solve some of the problems. If you have two angles that share a common side and vertex, they call them adjacent. They're basically, you know, stuck next to each other. Complementary angles are two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. So if you have one angle that's 40 degrees, its complement would be 50 degrees, or we would say those two angles are complementary. Supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. They form a straight line. So one might be 130 and the other is 50. And though you're going to see some exercises 
about things like this. Let's say you have a measure of an angle is 31 degrees and they want you to find the complement. So the complement would simply be 90 minus 31 or 59. If you have supplementary, you would simply take 180 minus 31. I'm just showing you that here. If you have two straight lines intersect, it creates what we call vertical angles, and vertical angles are equal. In other words, the measure of angle one and angle three are the same. Same with two and four. Now, if you look here at this as well, two and three would actually add up to a straight line. So do one and four, or three and four, or one and two. So some of the exercises you will complete will give you, for example, the measure of one of these angles and have you solve for the rest. You'll also see ones that look like this, where we have two parallel lines, in this case, L1, L2, the blue lines, and another line crossing them. That's called a transversal. That basically just means a line crossing, trans and verse. And it forms a bunch of angles. So you can see here some vertical angles, one, four, two, three, five, eight, six, seven. You also have other ones that are going to be equivalent angles here. You're going to have what we call alternate interior angles, three and six. They're inside the parallel lines on opposite sides, or four and five. Or alternate exterior, one and eight, two and seven, or corresponding one in, one out of the parallel lines on the same side, one, five, three, seven, two, six, four, eight. Those are going to be equal. And here are the rules. Alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, corresponding, and then exercises that have you solved, just like I stated. So if this is 52 degrees, then angle six is 52 degrees because they're vertical. And so is angle four because these are alternate interior angles or measure of angle eight and angle four are corresponding. So that's 52 and you start to be able to solve all the other angles. Remember the other ones are supplements, so it'll be 180 minus 52 or 128.